Hello and welcome back to Ride Rescue. So now that I've finished up all the color sanding and I'm, I've smoothed out all the chip repair and I've touched up the pinstripe, in this episode I plan on buffing the surface back to that rich, deep color. So these would be the tools that I'm going to start with. Um, like I said, I had a low-cost Harbor Freight buffer. I used it on a couple of cars and it gave up on me. So I stepped up to the, a new Makita that I purchased. Uh, it does have variable speeds. I'm going to start out with some pretty low RPMs while I experiment. Uh, I'm going to do a very heavy buffing pad. The wool pad cuts pretty fast. Um, I don't want to burn through any edges so I'm going to play around with some different speeds and, and on a flat surface before I started getting into the so the contours of the hood. And since I used a 5,000 grit sandpaper, I'm going to use a fine cut. Uh, Meguiar's has different cuts from a heavy cut to a light cut. So I'm going to go with the medium cut and then I'm going to switch to a lighter duty pad and then go to the swirl remover and take any of the swirls out that this heavy wool pad is going to leave in it. And then I could go with a foam pad and go with an even lighter um, buffing compound that is really light cut and take out the final scratches and leave a real high end shine. But that's what I would do normally with a clear coat. With a single stage paint, and especially a lighter color like this, I don't think I need to get into a real fine, fine um, light cut swirl remover and a polish. I'm just going to go from this step right to hand polishing with a good Meguiar's non-yellowing uh, polish. So we'll just start by experimenting with these products. Uh, I've got a couple of pads or I've got a couple of towels. I use a microfiber towel to clean my pads and then I have a regular uh, cotton towel to wipe off the residue that's on the floor. So I'll walk you through what I'm doing. I'm going to experiment but one thing you'll notice I've taped off the convertible top. These compounds they do flip all over the place. On the plastic back window it's fairly easy to clean off but it can scratch the window. And the top, this stuff gets in that top finish and it is really difficult to clean out. You have to use a scrubbing brush to get it out. So I'm going to save myself those headaches. I'm going to cover it all with plastic and now I'm going to buff and experiment and we'll see what this looks like. So to start out, I'm just going to condition this pad a little bit. Um, there's different additives you can put in your water to condition the pad, but for this test and experiment, I'm just going to use regular tap water. I'll rub it in good and then just kind of towel it off. <clears throat> now for the actual compound, start out with some just some daubs on it. All right. In order to keep from really flipping this all over, I'm just going to dab it in a little bit. And then I'll I'll start out at about a 2, which is around 9,000 RPM and then gradually bring up. It does have a variable speed where I can bring it up to that adjustment and keep it slightly on an angle.
see how it looks. Well, as I look across this finish where I haven't buffed, and I can kind of see where I did overlap, there's uh, still a lot of fine sand scratch. So now that I have a little better feel for the buffer, I'm going to speed it up. I'm probably going to go up to about 4, which is about 2,000 RPMs. see a huge improvement in that. If this was a real high-end clear coat finish, I would stop and go back and hand sand this some more or maybe even use a DA with uh, say a 1500 grit sandpaper wet and really sand all these scratches out to perfection and then do it again with the the 2,000 and, or the 3,000 and 5,000 grit sandpaper. But since this finish isn't perfect, the better I make it, the more perfect the finish is, the more the flaws are going to show. There's some dings here and there. There's a little dent here and a little dent there. I don't want to draw too much attention to these flaws, the touch-ups. If everything is absolutely perfect with a brilliant shine, I think those flaws are going to show up even more. So now that I'm looking across this, um, if I use the swirl remover with the other pad, I think it'll take out the rest of these swirls and leave it with kind of that aged feel and look that I'm after. So I am very pleased with this so far. I'm going to clean this pad up a little bit. Now, that's one, one area that I'm really not educated on is how often to clean these pads and what to watch for and how it's building up. Uh, I know as it builds up and it gets hard, you can burn the finish very easily, especially if you catch an edge. So to play it safe, I'm going to use my microfiber and clean this off and keep it really soft. <laughs> and I want to go around the edges now, so I'm going to turn the speed down again. I'm going to go back down to a 2, which is 9,000 RPM. pleased with the shine I'm getting. That uh, brings a, a nice polish and glaze to the finish. Uh, as I get much closer, that's not swirls from the buffer. That's scratch and from years of abuse on this finish. But it actually kind of takes on that old lacquer finish look. The, the, the lacquers that this car would have been painted with from the factory, that's the way they looked. When I bought my first Camaro, it still had the original paint. It was only six years old. And this is how that paint looked after just six years. And uh, there was no amount of buffing in the world that could get rid of that. It just seemed to keep appearing as I buffed deeper and deeper and deeper until I was buffing through the finish and I was still seeing all the lacquer cracking. 
So it just it was just cracks and flaws in the paint. So um, to a judge, uh, I know a lot of judges that would really prefer this finish on a classic car, especially in a single stage paint. Um, the old term of over restored uh, comes to mind. And this particular car, uh, as I've said before, with the aged look, this is actually preferred. So I'm really excited with the way this is going. Um, I'll finish this trunk lid and across the tops of the quarter panels, and then I will step down to the finer grit and uh, try polishing this even more just to see what the swirl remover does. But I highly doubt it'll take out these, these fine scratches that I didn't completely sand out with the uh, 2,000 and 5,000 grit sandpapers. But we'll see how it looks. I'm very pleased with that first step. Now I'm gonna see with this pad and a lighter compound, we'll use the uh, swirl remover. Condition this just a little bit again. I'm going to keep it at 2000 RPM and just bring it up slowly. much more brilliant shine uh, as you can see I still have a lot of scratch uh, those aren't swirls uh, swirls are real fine these are deep age scratches but to be able to bring that brilliance and the shine up even with the flaws it's leaving a really nice finish that I'm I'm pleased with. As I'm getting shinier and shinier and smoother and smoother in the top finish, I'm finding more and more flaws in the paint. So the better shine I bring up to this, the more flaws that I'm finding in the paint. You can see, I hope you can see that in the video, it's like little bubbles in the finish. Uh, little imperfections. Who knows why they're there and what's causing them. It almost looks like sap on the finish, but it's not. And the more I buff, the more they'll show. Um, there's some body work that I'm starting to notice now that uh, is not perfect body work. And there are a few dings that show up more and more as I polish. So overall, uh, you get this out in the sun or even inside my garage here. There is a nice sheen to it uh, without that perfect thick thick clear coat that uh, is great on a real high-end show car. But for the quality of this car and the age, this is ideal. I'm really happy with this finish. Hopefully the owner is too. I think he's going to be shocked because he thought the car needed to be repainted. He figured the paint was ruined and it was just so dull and it picked up grit and dirt and grime and it was really difficult to clean. Now with uh, a good coat of wax, uh, this will clean really easily and wipe off easily and it has a real nice sheen to it. I'm getting a really good feel for the buffer now. And what I can and cannot do. Uh, getting more and more aggressive with it. Uh, getting a little carried away with it too. Turning the speed up, getting the RPMs up, and it got dry on me. And you can see how quickly you can buff right through a clear coat. 
along this edge, it left a, a mark, which looked like a dry mark uh, from the buffer, just dry compound, actually burning right through the paint. And that area right there, if this was clear coat, that would have gone completely through the clear coat. So got too aggressive, got up on the edge, trying to protect this edge, not wanting to burn through this edge, and it got dry on me and I went right on into the paint. Luckily, since this is just a single stage paint and it's a, it doesn't have any metallics in it, uh, I can easily fix this. Uh, if it was metallic or clear, um, you can disturb the metal flake and how it's all laying down together and it's a permanent mark. There's really not much you can do to it. I saw it happen on a GTO once. Uh, it's devastating on a show car when it can't be fixed and you have no choice but to either live with it or repaint. Luckily this I can just buff out. So I'm going to set up my camera about in this area and see if you can actually see me buffing it out. Okay, <laughs> now I, I think you can clearly see these two stripes that I made in the finish. Uh, I'm going to clean the pad and then I'm going to rebuff that area and with my fingers crossed <laughs> I'm going to really hope I can get that out uh, without having to go back and color sand. You can see how I dried the compound on the pad. Uh, I'll dampen it, clean that off as much as I can. I want to get as much of this compound out on the edges as I can, and then really be careful of this edge. If I climb up on that edge, I can easily burn through. Now, I was running at almost a five. That's where I got carried away when I got up on the edge, trying to avoid this edge. So I'm going to turn it down to about a three and see if I can clean this up first before I start trying to buff and smooth it out and speed it up. I'm still a little bit damp. I, I don't want it to dry out. I'm just going to kind of buff into that edge. Now, if I did my job correctly, that should be gone. I don't see any marks at all along there. I, there's just a teeny little spot there when I really burned it deep. Need to fix. There's a little spot right there. And I'm seeing another one right here. But I got this stripe out. Now that I can get in the right light, I can see a little bit of a burn right there. Well, like I say, had I have been doing this on clear coat, uh, I would probably be having to put a new coat on this hood. But since it's not clear coat, I'm safe. But excellent learning experience, that's for sure. So one of the things I'm learning with this, um, at the high speed, if it gets dry, it's like sandpaper, and you can burn through really easy. And fortunately, I have not burned through any of these edges 
Had I have done that on one of those edges, there's not much you can do but repaint. The shop that I worked for, for a short time, we had a, a guy there that went through the paint on so many top end show cars and finally ended up getting fired because he just couldn't seem to get the feel for it. Um, trust me, it is difficult. It can go dry and burn so fast. A liberal amount this time. Rub it in. Now I'm going to start out at about a three, and then I'm going to increase the speed. I'm going to turn the speed way down. I want to ride along this pinstripe and I don't want to burn it off. So I'm going to slow it way down and then just glaze across it. Looks great. I'll finish these last two panels and then I'll switch the pad over to the other lighter pad. And I'll drop down to the swirl remover and then I'm going to hand coat this with a, a really good Meguiar's non-yellowing wax. Now that I've got all the top side of the car all sanded and polished and waxed, now I want to extend this black stripe so I can put the stainless or the <laughs> Not stainless steel, it's aluminum trim. We'll get that back on. So I'm going to start by extending this line down through this hole, which is the end of the trim. And I, there was another hole that's in this area somewhere that mounts the mounting bracket. So I'll have to redrill that hole and then put some sealant around it so it doesn't rust. I left this trim loose so that I can pull it out a little bit. Typically I would use a steel wall like a double lot or a triple lot or even a gray scotch brite pad, but since it's down here and it's under the trim and, and there's shadows, uh, it, I'm not concerned with any real scratch, but I want to scuff it up good. I want to take the shine off so that the black paint will stick and you know, get a good bond. i to feather it into that rocker panel. So mask that off. I don't want to paint that. I don't want it on too heavy. A, a heavy thick coat is going to chip off easier um, in big chips versus a lighter coat that'll just make little rock chips. Looks good. <clears throat> now I'll let this dry and I can put this trim back on. Perfect. Now I can put these little barrel clips back in and slide this emblem back on. Probably gonna have to get a screwdriver or a wrench or something that I can put even pressure on those. They should snap all the way in flush. And then, where they normally would have a nut on it, when these were originally bolted on from the factory, the nut leaves a pretty good indentation. So 
those indentations end up dragging on with friction onto these little barrel clips. Tap that in. Oh, they grab. Perfect. So as you can see behind me here, this is my next project. Uh, if you like watching somebody take a total loss, a salvage vehicle, and bring it back to life, get it back on the road again in its in its glory. This is a fairly new vehicle. It's it's barely a year old. It was only seven, eight months old when it was destroyed. So I'm really excited about this project. If you want to see what I'm doing, hit that post notification and subscribe, and you'll be alerted as I start working on this exciting new project.